I'll see if additional people come in. Uh, right. Okay. So uh, let's start with the usual governance. Um, let's start with um, with uh, today, Sandra. Hey, Sandra. Can you hear us? Hi. Hi, everyone. Yes. How is it uh, going, Sandra? From your point of view, your team, how how well it is formed? Any updates that you wanted to give? Well, we have a new member that is Sean. And well, I I have other member that left the project. So I hope that that we keep with this team together. And <laughs> I have another member that. It has a family emergency, so he couldn't join also. Yeah. But the three, but we are three uh, active members, and yesterday we have our meeting. And after I was asking some questions about job hunting in order to define the problem, uh, we start building uh, the document of concept phase. Mm -hmm. So we define the problem and we answer the other questions that you that you suggest. Okay, okay. So you said you have three members in your team. Uh, who are they, Sandra? Well, it's Sean and Mikey. Okay, okay, all right. All right. Don't don't worry. Um, you know we we will uh, bring in a lot of people, right? So I we don't want it to really go and bring in a lot of people um, without we have a strong leaders, and uh, and that's what we are going through right now, right? So so no worries. You will have more members as we evolve our product, and uh, and and things will be all right. Just to give you an example. Yeah. I have been talking to um, uh, Cognizant and uh, requesting them to send some volunteers uh, for our program, right? As an example, um, then uh, you know uh, from the IBM we have Skill Bill now, and also we have uh, um, got um, credit for their uh, cloud platform. So our IT team is working on that, and most probably once uh, the cloud has been set up. Then we will give you access so you can practically learn a um, few few things like IoT and things like that and do few things uh, practically and hands on. Right. So. So, you know, end of the day here, what we are doing is see there's two types of people, Sandra. Right. So one type of people is they already know everything and they come and they build. Right. And there is a second category of people is like they wanted to learn and build. Right. So what we are trying to do is. We we are we are all second category. We all wanted to come together, learn together, and build, and then become the first category, and also take help from the first category of people who already have experience in building um, products and solutions uh, by by themselves, right? So we 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 are really trying to evolve the skill to to that level. I have some nice uh, slides today to 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 help you guys understand what I mean, and I will do that, okay, in my session. Okay. So don't give up. Continue to learn. I think Mickey is a very dedicated person, and I know him for last uh, 12 months. And um, you know, he will definitely support you in this journey. I don't think he is going to leave you and go. No worries. And now Sean is there. Um, Sean, uh, what's your background, Sean? Hello, Sean. Can you hear us? Okay. Uh, yes, sorry, I was trying to unmute me and uh, that's it was behind window. So my background is uh, machine learning, Python, uh, databases, C sharp, some web development and. So you have uh, everything. So see Sandra, you got a right person, right? You one person has all the skills that you need, Sandra. Right? <laughs> this is really awesome. Really awesome. Thanks, Sean, for supporting Sandra. And um, let's build uh, something together uh, interestingly. And what I would also appreciate is, of course, you're building something to give back to the community. But if you can build something to really, um, you know, start your own company together as a team, that would also be really awesome, right? Um, and, and this is an opportunity to do that. 
Good. Yes. Thank you, Kader. This is precisely, uh, if I may, this is precisely what we were thinking yesterday during our meeting. There are so many good things uh, to add to Sandra's uh, speech, uh, which she gave before. Like uh, all three of us, we have a machine learning background. So that makes this team really, really unique and strong. Yeah, excellent, excellent. And you can add more people. I'll tell you um, uh, in a while. Let's move on to. Um, uh, Fian, Fian, how is it going with you and your team? Um, so far, uh, we've been trying to um, understand, uh, get a shared understanding of what we're trying to achieve. Because at first, we each and every body in the team kind of understood uh, the skills analysis in a different way. So, but last week, Saturday. We had a meeting and we actually discussed uh, what we were trying to achieve to like for everybody to understand uh, what we were trying to achieve. So based on the project that we chose, which is skills analysis, we've been able to um, come down to uh, two options in tackling how we're going to go about it. So the first one is more like we're trying to create a survey where uh, people can answer questions based on the survey. And uh, the final result is going to be like a, a, a competency map that shows uh, each and everybody, uh, the person's um, uh, skill, like the person's strength and weakness and so on. Uh, the second one is we're trying to think of creating a quiz where the person answers several questions and the result of the quiz is going to be something like uh, uh, it's going to tell the person the kind of job he or she can do. And based on that job, it's going to uh, create a competency map of the skill of the person. So we've been able to boil down how we want to uh, approach the problem in two ways. And we've decided to go with the quiz uh, route. But uh, one thing that we had uh, issue with, not like we had issue, but we needed clarification is, is we are not sure if Sandra's group is also doing skills analysis, but if Sandra's group is doing skills analysis, um, is it going to be an issue for Testopper if two teams also do skills analysis because we're doing skills analysis as well? Well, we don't have any issues at all. Man. What is Testopper? Testopper is you and me, <laughs> right? It's a people uh, grassroots movement. I explained that, right? So I don't have any issues. How many members are there in your team, Finn? Uh, including myself, we're four. Four, okay. And who are they? Uh, so I have uh, Ashwin. Okay. Uh, myself, Gautami, Gautami Hetal, and Mukit. We're, we're actually five, rather. Five, five. Yes, okay. we're five, okay. yeah. This is perfect, right? Uh, yeah, if you want to join a team and form a one strong team, um, you're, you're welcome to do that. But I'm not sure um, what is um, Sandra doing? What is the project Sandra and um, Mickey and Sean is planning to do? Have you guys come up with some yes. idea? You know, you, you can yes. take time to come up with an idea, but, but anyways, yeah. Yes, yes, we are planning to make a match in, with the skills of the candidate and the skill required in the labor market. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know what you should do. It's actually good, good, right? You both have to talk to each other and see if uh, if uh, if you want to jointly do this, right? Um, now you have to sync up your mindset uh, also, right? So I'll leave it to you guys to um, decide that. And if you both wanted to do it alone, do it alone. If you want to do it together, do it together and keep me posted, okay? Okay, nice. All right. Okay. So now uh, moving on to uh, the third team that we have, uh, Greg. Greg, uh, do you want to give an update? Yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks, Kada. Um, so for my team, um, we really had great discussions um, 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 on Saturday. Um, my team, um, there was a good turnout last week. So we have my team members are Sarika. Uh, Pankjak, Adele, Elizabeth, Sagal, and Ash, um, mm -hmm. including myself. So we had a very good meeting last week. So we talked about um, the slide you shared with us, 
we talked about that uh, we need to know the phase that we're in, which is currently the concept phase. Mm -hmm. So um, we talked about the problems that um, we're trying to solve. So like people were changing their careers, immigrants who have experience overseas coming into Canada, um, people who are struggling to get jobs in Canada, students, and what the impact of automation will be. We talked about um, um, who our uh, customers are going to be like students, educators, career training institutes, employers and employees, uh, different categories of people. And we also talked about um, solutions um, to those problems that we're trying to solve. How we're going to match. By the way, our project is um, labor market, right? So we're trying to match categories of jobs to the skills of the people. This is a part of the solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, career institutes and educators to know where to focus to, to train their people. And these are just some of the things we talked about. And we also talked about the need to register with Skill Build um, to uh, learn some new some new things. So uh, we couldn't we couldn't finish all the 10 questions on the slide you shared with us. I know today we're going to be talking about some some of this just to just to help us um, with our thought process. So um, um, for me, um, like um, uh, uh, Pan Pankaj mentioned in our meeting, we need to be somehow aggressive, right? So we need to be able to discuss those 10 points on the concept phase so that we can begin to move on uh, to the next phase. So one of the one of the things I've spoken, uh, I just sent a chat to my team members. I would, I'll need a, uh, a co-lead. Currently, I have um, I have two projects that I'm currently I'm working on in the office, which is um, taking a whole lot of my time. So I need a co-lead. I'll reach out to my team members to um, to see if anyone will indicate interest so that we can co-chair. Another thing that I'll need, um, this is all new to us, right? Um, we'll need a mentor that has actually understand this process and that mm -hmm. can help us in aligning our thoughts and make, our, um, make um, that is help us Make informed decisions on different thoughts that might be coming to us. We are all we're all new to this. We're trying to learn with it, and we need somebody mm -hmm. to guide us. Yeah, correct, I, correct, I correct, believe correct. That's the members too will need it. Yeah, correct, correct. See, uh, we all have to start somewhere, right? So we are not born with um, everything knowing uh, in this world. So we have to start somewhere, and we as a team together we are starting. And now, yeah, so so we go one step at a time, right? So the first step is to get some access to the learning things, which you guys already have it. And then the second uh, thing is uh, get you guys to learn some additional things, right? So instead of we going into multiple different uh, vendors, we can focus on one vendor and learn the best out of that vendor and build product uh, around that vendor's platform. So we chose for IBM. So um, probably next week we will have some access to some of the IBM platforms for you guys. So, you know, remember, um, this is, yeah, end of the day, we wanted to build something, but at the same time, it's a process. You go from one step to another step to get there. And we are going to do this together, right? And I'm going to coach you guys to do this together. That's the thing, right? And I'm going to coach you guys to do this together and to um, ensure that you are, you are able to build further on top of that. And that's what I'm going to do as a part of this program. Now, uh, now the third step is we we were talking about last time, um, you know, bringing in the mentors. Uh, today, I actually spoke uh, spoke to Cognizant and I requested them to see if they can bring in some volunteers for us to um, support on this project, right? So, so it's it's under work, and I will I'm going to get some additional uh, experts to mentor you guys. Now, we also already have a couple of mentors who nominated themselves, so. One person uh, is Partha. Let me see if he joined this. So last week I mentioned uh, Partha Kaushik is he he can be a mentor of one of the team. So I am not sure. Uh, um, have you guys chosen uh, Partha? Um, have you leaders have reached out to Partha and um, and uh, shared your um, ideas and roped him in? I don't know. Um, so question to all the three leaders, right? Of Finn. Um, and and Greg and um, uh, Sandra, did you guys reach out to Partha Kaushik? Yes, no. I have I, ha I haven't reached out to to him. Not not yet. Okay. Yes. Okay. So 
so, so we as a leader, this is the one of the coaching that I gave you. Remember, we as a leader, we have to take the first step to grab, right? Things are not going to, leadership is such that things are not, you don't wait for things to unfold. Rather, you go for it, right? So so last, last week, uh, we said uh, Partha is available. And I expect um, the leaders and also the team members uh, within each team can reach out to Partha and rope him in. Okay. I mean, uh, hey, Kadar, you are just saying Partha is available without. Uh, uh, I mean. <coughs> just Hello? continue. Uh, continue, Kadar. It's okay. You proceed with what you were saying. No, no, no. You have reservations. You can tell now, right? It's okay. If you don't want to be a mentor, you can be. Uh, you can. You can upfront say, "I remember that I spoke to you the other time, and you ex you expressed for the mentorship, right?" So that's why I brought up your topic. Uh, but if you have a reservation, please say it. Uh, you know, we are one team. Nothing wrong in saying it. Yeah, my time and availability is limited, mm -hmm. so um, I am not very sure how much I can contribute. So um, let the team's uh, leads be aware of that. Uh, I'll definitely talk to anybody, but um, uh, you know the uh, how much time is available from me is going to be a. Uh, uh, I cannot promise. Uh, uh, I cannot promise a, 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 an amount of time that I can be available. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's fine. That's fine. Understood. So, you know, leaders reach out to you and you guys uh, see if uh, things work out. If it is not, it's fine, right? Uh, this is an exercise, again, that we can always do this together as a team. Now, I also um, requested uh, Farhan to join this call. So, Farhan, would you like to uh, uh, introduce yourself to the team? Absolutely. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um... Kadar, to the rest of the team, those who do not know me, I've been in the in IT industry for about uh, over 30 years. Um, right now, I am <clears throat> a president of my own company, which is uh, mainly doing uh, IT consulting and uh, project management. And uh, I have been involved in multiple NGOs. Uh, multiple mentoring programs. I mentor newcomers into uh, into Canada who <clears throat> need assistance to settle and in the IT field as well. I am a member of the International Police Association. I have uh, I am a member of the Professional Criminologist Association in in Kenya. And that's where I'm from. I'm from Kenya originally. So, you know, I was interested when Kadar asked me to join uh, the mentorship program. And again, I, I like to coach people. I like to mentor people to be successful, right? And it's a two-way thing. This commitment from both sides. Um, and this is something that I really enjoy doing, helping people and seeing people become successful right so that is uh, that makes me quite happy and if there's anything i can assist with right now i have some time on my hand so i will be available that's it for my kadar thank you farhan thank you thank you very much farhan so farhan and i uh, share the same mindset of helping people and making people successful and uh, we try our best to carve out, um, you know, we all have day jobs, right? Um, and and uh, we all do a lot of different things. Uh, and and we, in spite of all that, um, you know, our, the mindset is to really help people. And, and Farhan's mindset uh, aligns very much with my mindset. So I invited him into this call. So again, um, you know, the leaders and the team members, you can always reach out to Farhan and get some uh, mentorship from him. Share your ideas and, um, you know, um, request him if he's available um and and uh, do it and i will bring in more and more mentors into this call as as we evolve and also we will bring in uh, together we will bring in additional participants who can build this uh, uh, project together right so we're going to do this all together as a team and that's what we are learning together as a team now i also invited in this call and another uh, gentleman called damian amol 
Uh, Damien, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Damien. I am an IT uh, program manager myself. I've been working in IT for the last uh, 15 years, which was when I came to, to Canada originally from Nigeria. So I just uh, recently joined Testopa uh, within the last month, actually. So I'm still uh, I'm still uh, finding my, my feet around. Um, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here, here in this meeting today. I think I am maybe primarily will be working as part of the, the programs team. But as I said, I'm still, you know, learning and still figuring out the organizational structure. And uh, sure, I will be looking to contribute as much as I can in, in any way. So nice to meet you all. Perfect. So the idea here is team. Um, the, the message I want to give is as we are continuing to grow and I am starting to build my own leadership team to help you guys, right? So now I have Farhan with me and I have, uh, uh, you know, Damien with me to help me with project management and Farhan to help me with mentorship and Partha whenever he's available to help you guys with some mentorship. Now we will bring in more and more people, uh, people um, uh, and also resources to help you guys to learn and, and become an entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs. This is what this Testoper project is all about, right? So this is what we are going to do collectively, all of us together to get there. This is really good. Now I wanted to know um, in this call, is there anyone who is not part of these three teams? Let me see, okay. Um, Sean is there, Sarika, you're already part of a team. Uh, Sagal, can you hear uh, us? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Kader, I'm part of Greg's team. Oh, this is awesome. Okay. Um, Ki Hethel, you're also part of the team. Um, Gautami, you're also part of the team, I think. Yeah, Fian Farhan now is available as a mentor to help you guys. Like I mentioned, we both share. Elizabeth, you're already part of the team. Ashwin, uh, which team you uh, are you part of? Ashwin. Hi, Kadar. I am part of Fin team. Fin team. Perfect. Adel, what about you? Adel, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm part of Greg's team. Greg's team. Awesome. So this is, see, this is really awesome. So I think we are going on the right direction. And uh, this week I wanted to bring in a couple of gentlemen, Damien and uh, Farhan, to, to join me in running the program as well as um, helping you all to learn and grow, mentor you guys technically a little bit from um, uh, Farhan's side and the project management from the Damien side. And we will also bring in additional uh, uh, architects, experts um, when there is the right time, right? So, you know, you need to evolve yourself to a level before we bring in them, right? What do, what do I mean by that? And that's why we have another 30 minute session where I always teach you something um, new uh, for you guys. So let's get, get started there. Uh, before I um, start my session, I just wanted to open the floor. We have three minutes for any questions, please. So uh, I joined a bit late. This is Farhan here, and I just wanted to understand a little bit of a background on these uh, um, these calls and what the project teams are doing so that I get an understanding and position myself accordingly, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's just a couple of minutes I can share. So what we are trying to do, see this program, Farhan, that uh, we do in Testoper is called as a Testoper project. OK, so it is a program which helps individuals like everyone here, including me, to come together, form teams, learn together and build something awesome and give back to the community or start their own company. This is the program's structure, right? And uh, I believe this is our fifth session or sixth session. What we have been able to achieve is, uh, without any marketing so far, we have been able to bring, we are able to make three teams. Now, a couple of teams are talking about merging into one team, right? Which is still okay. So we are able to form the teams. And now the team is brainstorming on an idea that they wanted to work on. And while they are brainstorming on the idea that they are working on, 
um, what what we what I uh, from the Testoper team, what we do is we help them with additional knowledge, skills that are required throughout this program to get get to the target, which is you know building something awesome. So that's what this Testoper project is all about. So you know when we started today, we have uh, three leaders um, uh, took a lead to form the team. Those three leaders are Sandra, Greg, and um, Finn. And they worked with the other members and um, they, they are able to form their own team right now, right? And, and from the test over, we have provided certain resources um, to learn and um, like from IBM Skill Build, uh, we have provided them and for IBM Cloud, we'll be providing and I'm bringing in mentors. So whatever uh, that we can do from the point of view of making this team successful to build something awesome is all about this test over project program. Is it clear, Farhan? Yes, fantastic. Uh, great to hear this uh, story and I'd love to be part of it for sure. Perfect. And uh, this program from Testoper we are running and I am leading this and slowly, slowly I'm building my leadership while Fien, Sandra and um, and um, Greg are building their own team. I need to build my own team as well to help these three teams, right? So that's why I requested Damien you to join me and also requested Partha to help me wherever um, uh, possible. OK, so this is the test over project uh, channel that we have. These are the three teams right now. We have artificial squad, skill link and the future. The core script and Intel recruit last year we did some pilot and uh, uh, we had a team uh, who was doing that pilot and I'm sure that they will come back um, and, and start on this uh, activity. It's that uh, right now COVID and uh, the, there are per some personal emergencies are there. So it was a very small team, right? Um, so they they are not there, but they will come back. But for this year in 2021, we started with three teams, Artificial Squad, Skill Link and Future, which is headed by three leaders that I mentioned and uh, their teams. OK, perfect. So 30 minutes. So let's time to learn uh, something new today. So I prepared something uh, awesome to share. Let me see where I am. OK, let me go to the. Super project. Things here. Sorry, guys, I have number of things open. See, uh, Greg, you mentioned two projects. I have five projects open in my desktop. All right, good, good, good. Can you all see the screen? Uh, yes, we can see the screen. Yes, okay, we, can. yes we can see. Perfect. Let's start learning something together. These are all the things that we have already learned together. Why we learn together? Because we are building the product, so we need to understand the complete product life cycle. So we started learning about what the product is, what the product line is, services is, solution is, what as a CEO, um, you know, because right now the way that I see is these three leaders are like a like a CEO of a company. What you are responsible for? What are all the different things that you need to do? And we talked about that and we talked about um, the different phases of uh, the product management that you would go through in this. Right. Um, right now, you guys are in the in the concept phase. We talked about that. We, we also talked about all the three phases, how all these three phases we, we, we talked about what these three phases mean and the definitions of sub phases and you kind of understand the big picture of the product management life cycle. So we, we start from the concept to all the way to the strategical and tactical management. And then we um, we had certain uh, leadership uh, tip for you guys. Um, and now we also took a couple of actions, if I remember right last time. Anybody remembers what actions that we took last time? I asked you guys to look at some answers for some question. We asked us to look at research spending of different corporations, right? Yes. So how much of the percentage of their uh, money every corporation spends in R&D on an average? Uh, an average, I think a 10%. 10%? Think or you researched it? Well, when I did the research, I saw that uh, they invest 
between 3 and 16 percent of their revenue. Awesome. Anyone else researched on that? Yeah, I mean, there is uh, a wide variation between different corporations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is even corporations which spend more than what the uh, what the revenue is on uh, research. So we have at least uh, Prometric Life Sciences has spent 200% of their uh, revenue on research. Uh, Zymeworks, 106.9%. Mm. So it's a very, very widely varying. Uh, so where do they get money from? If it is more than a revenue, where do they get the money from to spend it on the research? Um, I guess it must be venture capitalists. Or grants. Or, uh, yeah, could be. Could be some grants too. Yeah, there are these are these fall under right. There are a number of companies like that, Partha. They fall under research and next generation um, related stuff, right? Um, which is absolutely correct. But when it comes to a, a company like a commercial uh, for profit company like Microsoft, Google, uh, Cisco, uh, you name it, right? Um, uh, you know, Rogers, Tellers, AT and T, and these are the companies. How much do they spend uh, on the on the R and D is, um, is 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 where the answer that we should look for, right? There are certain companies who are more specific on you know they they are for profit companies, but their goal mission is 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 different, right? And and you see in some of the companies that uh, that if they go down in their revenue, they cut the cost, they fire, there is layoffs, right? So. So, so I was uh, uh, talking more, more from that point of view. Anyone else uh, researched, please? I did. This is Ashwin. Yeah. So Ashwin. actually, the R and D spend uh, spending is depend on the uh, verticals. Suppose if we're talking about the computing and electronics vertical, mm -hmm. they are closely in spending around 22 to 23 percent on their R and D. Mm -hmm. If we talk about the healthcare. They are closely spending uh, close to 20 to 21 percent. Mm -hmm. So it's depend on the vertical, which vertical uh, we see, because everyone has different uh, uh, aspect to see the R&D. Mm -hmm. Good. And Anyone else researched? Uh, yes, I, this is, uh, I follow Tesla and they in 2020, they spend 51.3 percent on their R&D. Yeah. That's good. Anyone else? Yeah, um, for software companies, I look at some software companies. They spend um, about 20% of their revenue on research. Depends on what they want to achieve um, in that year. So every year it's a little bit different. Um, like you mentioned, when revenue falls down, they look for a way to cut costs down because re research shouldn't suffer, right? So mm -hmm. they they spend on research, but when revenue go down, they look for ways to cut cost. Yeah, yeah. Good. I'm very happy that you guys looked it up, right? So what I wanted to really uh, conclude of uh, this discussion is to two folds. The first one is I was uh, really expecting uh, people coming back and telling me it varies depending upon various uh, factors, right? Which is what exactly you all did. That's good. And then if you actually look at uh, all of the uh, inputs, you would see somewhere between 15 to 30 percent is more normal R&D spend uh, that you would see across and average around all the different um, R&Ds, right? So this is a, it, it, there is no one straight answer, but this is a generic way of uh, looking at it. Uh, the more profitable business or the business who has less spend in R&D and make more profit, right? So uh, again, it goes back to the nature of the nature of the companies and things like that. But it's a good research and a good conclusion. I kudos to you guys. What was the second action that I mentioned? Um, anyone can remember? This was one. What was the second one? Or we had this one. I believe it was to finish the other items on the conception phase. Product 
right right okay perfect all right let's move on to learn something new um thanks guys for that research so the idea here is that even you know maybe a, another research that i wanted you to do within the percentage of r and d whatever the spend that they have done right um maybe that no no let's let's leave that for now right we are we are still not there i don't want to get there for now let's leave that for, for now so let's get into learning something so you if you remember that i always keep telling you all right that teaming is not so easy forming a team is not so easy and you all are the leaders you know whether uh, whether uh, fin greg and sandra who is leading the team and also the team within uh, you know uh, everyone else within the team right you you all are learning together and and i can tell you teaming is not so easy if it is easy everyone can do it right so it requires skills it requires patience it requires the leadership skill to really do that this is the reality and you know you might be thinking i have not done anything that's what a lot of people might think right if you are thinking that forget uh, please please uh, have a different uh, thought process and opinion about what you have achieved so far because what you have achieved is not something anyone can actually achieve okay so teaming is not so easy trust me and why it is not easy i'm pretty sure when you form these teams uh, together these are all the different things you might have faced already now or you might face uh, moving forward you might face uh, uneven commitment like you know uh, one person uh, wants to do um, 50% of a task another person wants to do only 2% of the task the uneven commitment what happens when there is an uneven commitment there is a there is a uh, you know there's no balance in it right so it's a, it's a it's a challenging uh, situation you might face it you might have already faced it or you might face it in future uneven empowerment not everybody in the team has got the same drive that creates uh, some kind of um, you know um, uh, disturbance within the team right and uh, which is normal again all these things that i'm saying you as a leader have to work towards solving them and also you have to have a big heart to accept these are all the things are going to happen anyways and and you have to think about how do i solve them or how do i run with it with what i have these are all the different things that you have to think as a leader you will come up with an uneven alignment like someone wants to do something someone else does not agree to do that and you will have an uneven alignment uneven trust uneven accountability uneven and even uneven you will have lots of uneven things that can happen it's so easy right if i wanted to do something if i do it by myself it's so easy but what's fun in it there is no fun you don't learn anything but when you are in a team and you are able to do things that's where the fun is where the fun is if there is a challenge right and if there is a challenge and if um, if uh, if it is not easy to do then there is a fun if there is no challenge and everything is easy to do then there is no fun and i am a kind of a person to to look for the challenge and try to solve that challenge and you as a leader we all as a leader have to do that and that's where the fun comes right so again i wanted to reiterate whatever that you have achieved is already something that no one else can achieve you have formed your team and you are able to set up a meeting to bring the team members together and talk first to talk first to word that itself a huge thing trust me it, that itself is a great achievement that you have achieved and that's the start right we have uh, it, it's just beginning right we have lot of things to uh, do moving forward be proud of what you have done in spite of all these challenges now when you talk about team right there are four key steps that happens see in the previous session i talked about little bit on the product now i'm talking a little bit about the team because it's very important you as the leaders and also each team members understand this that you are and and, and you are pr be proud of that right so the first one is the forming so what this is the first stage of any team that you form right so what happens in this team this probably you have already gone through maybe new team members will come in you will go through this again and you will onboard them into that team right so the forming is the stage where you get to know each other 
and slowly start to understand who is going to do what like fian is going to lead and this person is going to do that that person is going to do this and this process more or less you guys have gone through um, and i'm sure that uh, sandra and greg has talked to you all and said hey you know you focus on developing your skills on front end you focus on back end and etc cetera, etc cetera. and through the skill build you guys are building the skills right again think about it right it's what is the fun if i bring in uh, a lot of people who already know super coding and who already know um, how to build product and if i train them to build product what is the fun there's no fun right if i am able to bring in people who don't know nothing and they are starting from scratch and help them to develop through the process and become successful there is a fun in it and there is a challenge in it so the things that are not so easy is there is always a fun and challenge right so from the point of view you what you have done so far forming the team is is a fun thing that you have achieved and maybe you will continue to do this throughout the process right it's not like you finished forming and then you are going to the next stage you are not going to the next stage even though if theoretically all these stages are uh, explained but practically um, you will always go back to the previous stage and then come back uh, move for, you know go back move forward go back move forward that's what happens then the next stage after forming the team it's called a storming so in this what happens is you will face a lot of uneven things right i talked about uneven commitment empowerment alignment you will face turbulence and some of the team you guys have picked up an idea that was um, presented uh, initially by the test operator it's possible within your team some member can come and say hey let's work on some other idea and let's build a company together and uh, and become successful right so this new idea will surface in the starting of the project or in between or in the later stage whatever right and um, and what happens is in the storming stage you will learn to deal with such conflict together as a team and you will have you will you will probably create some kind of a governance in case of disagreement maybe a voting or something the most people vote um, you will go on that direction and the people who don't vote respect that decision and move forward right so that's one good example teams learn to deal with conflict that's the second stage of uh, team forming in other words teaming then the third uh, st uh, stage of that is called as norming so here what happens is you know within your team right you will start seeing this some kind of a stability and you start seeing a strong relationship strong friendship between you all trust me it's not about you building the product right it's about you building the relationship when there is a strong relationship when you have a strong team when you all have a drive to continuously learn you will achieve what you wanted to achieve so in the norming stage stabilization you will start uh, seeing it and you will start seeing slowly you are turning into a productive relationship uh, so a strong relationship and you start to see some productive outcome like you mentioned uh, someone mentioned that you guys are doing uh, surveys and things like that so creating a survey and sending out the survey itself is a two big 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 achievement it's not small thing trust me these are all things uh, is 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 not easy and then trust evolves between your your team and you will start slowly seeing that every team member starting to deliver on commitments right so that is the norming stage then finally performing stage once you get there then you have a well oiled machines you all work smoothly efficiently and productively so these are all the four stages of teaming and i wanted you to remember it's not easy and what you have already done is a big achievement already and you should be very proud of and you should understand these four stages of teaming and you will go from one stage to another stage sometime you fall back with new new person joining your team and then bring him back into the future uh, uh, stages but these are all the four things that you need to remember and you will go through this and there will be challenges and you will go through this and you will make this happen now again you know that whenever i train i always connect to test over project right so why this this why did i train this slide for two reasons the first reason that i trained this slide is because you all as a leader and the team member you will experience all these different things when you are forming the team and understand the different stages of the team and try to progress from one stage to an another stage to an another stage 
and build a strong relationship within the team when you have a strong relationship strong team and having like i said having a continuous learning um, attitude you will achieve what you wanted to achieve maybe next year you start your own company these three teams you might be having your own company probably you will call me to advise and and maybe pay me some check write me some check you never know right but remember these things right these two points that i mentioned okay this is very very important and you know where this slide is always go back and refer this slide whenever you have doubts and you wanted to refer back and uh, and discuss with your team now let's uh, switch a gear a little bit okay um the concept phase so we understood the complete product life cycle phase a uh, product life cycle we understood and now most of the team members here you are all in the teaming stage and uh, while you are doing uh, the teaming stage right uh, while you are teaming it forming the team in other words right you are working on to explore the ideas and come up with some kind of a decision of should i go with that idea should i not go with an idea or should i um you know have some other uh, idea to be considered among the team that i wanted to build my company so that's the phase right now you are in in parallel to you um forming the team these are the two things that's uh, that's happening in parallel now why did i ask you not to reach out and not to form the big teams at this point of time is because you know if you have 3 to 5 members in your team that's more than enough for now right and then once you are able to have an idea then you can always bring in in the next phases additional members for development and things like that when you look at it in a company right a company which has 200 employees or not all 200 employees get involved in the concept phase there are few four or five gets involved in the concept phase and get an approval and buy in then add additional team members additional team members to deliver and i am going to coach you guys uh, the existing team members i'm going to coach you guys how to go through all these phases and bring more member more member to achieve this and deliver this as a as a as a team so now having said that in the concept phase like i mentioned you are exploring today some ideas right and you are accessing the ideas and you are trying to create some kind of a, some kind of a statement a document it's called as an opportunity statement right um, uh, to really uh, you know i can probably create a template for an opportunity statement in our next meeting and i can send it to you guys so there are certain questions that you need to answer yourself and you need to be convinced among your team to make a decision go or no go so that opportunity statement normally um, um uh, you know has few points that you need to from the thought process point of you ask yourself question right in the concept phase so the mo most important thing is you have to have a proof see go and no go decisions requires a lot of analysis right you can make go and no go decisions without proof behind it and first of all you yourself have to be convinced uh, i made a right decision for go or no go so that means you need to put a little bit of more effort from you to collect those proofs and uh, defend and uh, defend yourself and also defend together as a team that you have made a right decision go or no go it is okay you know after going through this 10 steps it is okay if you decide well i started doing the skill analysis but i think uh, it's the wrong decision let me go back and start from scratch together as a team because you are going to together decide as a team no go and then go back together as a team and start thinking about some other idea and go through this process it is okay if you go through this process for next one month two month it is okay but this going through this process itself is a lot of learning it this this is not something anybody and everybody could do right thinking thinking about some idea to build itself is a big thing and then going and validating that idea collecting the proofs and then convincing yourself to go to the next stage in other words taking that idea to the next stage it's again a very much it's a huge thing trust me so now these are all the questions that you need to answer yourself so first question that you need to answer is well uh, not answer first question that first point that you need to really um, uh, do is you have to describe describe the problem so see there is no innovation that you can do if it doesn't solve the problem there should be a problem that you should solve and if there is if 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 uh, if whatever that you are trying to do if it doesn't solve the problem that means it's not 
called an idea. It's not called an innovation. So it should solve the problem. It could be a new problem, existing problem, or enhancing the current problem, uh, or doing the current problem, or solving the current problem in a different way. I will give you an example. Okay, if you think about 15 years ago, what you know, or 20 years ago, what happened? If you look at uh, different companies that um, that uh, uh, became big, they were all operating on a model where what's the right word to say scarcity right so so like for example not many people had car they had money right supply demand you always know this there should be a supply uh, there should be a demand for the supply now people had money and there was no car and and the company started manufacturing the car and people started buying it's called a scarcity model right and i'm picking car because that's a good example to explain this so that's what happened in the in the olden days now today if you look at it take an example uber their business model is called surplus business model meaning lot of people have car now how do but the car is sitting at home uh, 80% of the time or 90% of the time only 10% of the time it is uh, being used how can i um, you know leverage the surplus resource that is available and create a business that's what uber did surplus model airbnb surplus model right so see how the landscape is shifting from uh, from uh, uh, you know um, uh, scarcity model to a surplus or abundance model right so these are all the things that you need to really think so so in the in uber's case what happened so you know 20 years ago there was no car available uh, and and it was manufactured right uh, transportation a means of transportation personal transportation now 20 years later there's a lot of cars are available but but how to solve the uh, not uh, uh, you know ideal time of the car you see so this this is what i mean by problem right so you have to have a problem to solve and you need to also be able to convince yourself is it a real problem how you will convince yourself is it a real problem if you really see there is a need and you have you have uncovered the need that means what someone needs something that is the problem and i am going to solve that problem with my idea and that's how i am going to that that's going to result in me building a product even surely a successful company it's all connected which is which is going back to the previous sessions whatever that i was training about product then once you understand that then the second thing that you need to make sure is for whom so you you know, you understand there is a problem right and you wanted to solve that understand but then who 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 you are going to solve this problem for whom you are going to solve this problem this is very very important like skill analysis maybe you can say i am going to solve this problem for the people who are working or maybe not working or maybe immigrants so you need to think about uh, uh, you know you, you know, sometimes what happens is when you discover a problem it can actually solve thousand people okay thousand different uh, categories or thousand different types of people right so one problem can solve uh, can address multiple things but if you have to build a product that is going to address thousand different uh, areas the same problem people have then your product uh, scope will become so very big so it's always a good that you start with a minimum viable product right maybe you should narrow down and say okay i have you know these are the 100 communities or the 100 uh, whatever right has the problem but i'm not going to solve the problem for all 100 i'm going to solve the problem for one and let me focus on that right so that's the second thing for whom that you are trying to solve the problem but if you are going to build this as a business then you have to it's called as market segment or target customer right you have to segment that market that's only when you are going to build that you have to understand what is the total size of the market right i think about this covid uh, uh, vaccine what is the total size of the market it's everyone in this uh, 
in this world every single person like uh, in this world now when you are uh, manufacturing a car who is target market not everybody right the people who can afford to buy a car if you are going to manufacture a lipstick it's going to be a female if you are going to manufacture a lipstick with a lot of um, uh, you know let's say a lipstick where where you also have a pen then you are targeting a, a, a woman who is a working woman she she takes a pen and a, and a, you know a notebook for every meeting and she also kind of puts the lipstick as an example so these are all the products right i'm just sharing some of the examples so you have to target you have to identify which market segment that you are going to focus and it is very very important that you choose um, you know when you are building something new don't try to solve all don't try to solve the problem for everyone all the use cases try to solve the problem for one use case and build that and then become successful and then expand that expand that into different market segment and you go on so you have to really ask yourself the question for whom you are trying to solve the problem and then how would how would it solve the problem so once you understand to whom you want to solve the problem let's say in this case um, let's say um, you know uh, uh, you know let's let's pick this uh, case right uh, uber for example this is going to solve the problem two it's going to solve two problems right so the problem number one is the car that is sitting idle and and that car is going to generate revenue when it is sitting idle same thing air and air airbnb right a house which is empty is going to generate revenue when it is in empty so it's actually trying to solve the problem of emptiness the owners are going to actually get benefited out of that and it is also solving a problem for the people who are renting it and coming and staying in the homes like air airbnb and also uber less money than that they would normally pay if they have to rent a hotel or other things right so this these are some of the examples how would I, how would it actually solve the problem by providing a cheap accommodation utilizing the um, uh, ideal time of the house and the car right so so that that that's how it is actually trying to solve the problem so you also have to think whatever the idea that you are building how it is actually solving the problem then the fourth point is how is this opportunity strategically aligned very very important uh, to to answer this question so i'll give you an example right um, let's say i you know uber has a has a, a strategy to to really do these two things right one is to um, make use of ideal time of the car and the second one is to um, you know provide the cheaper transportation for affordable and cheaper transportation for all now these are all the two things that that they are doing now if if they are using this th this is their main strategy right now if they are trying to do something uh, like for example helping the car owners to if you know someone in uber for example have come up with an idea um, to helping the car owners to uh, you know uh, i mean increase the business to sell car owners um, let's say uh, some equipments and accessories in the car right so let's say someone in uber has come up with that uh, idea it is a valid idea yeah it's going to bring in some additional revenue for uber but then the uber uh, uber team will think hey is it strategically aligned to my vision and mission so what is my vision and mission what is my massive transformative purpose i'll talk about vision mission and massive transformative purpose in our next session but the point is you always have to have a vision mission and massive transformative purpose in your head this is why this is what as a company that i wanted to do and you should always validate that with all the new ideas that is coming up if you don't do that then what will happen is you will be all over and you will be you know i'm um, doing lot of things and good in nothing so it is very important that you answer your question how is this opportunity strategically aligned okay that's the fourth thing because you don't have a vision and mission right now so you, for you you might consider anything is good but this is the also the fourth question that you need to answer yourself now the fifth question is what are the characteristics i know it's uh, we are over time 3 minutes i'll try to finish quickly here and i'll try to give a, a, a recap of this in our next session okay so the fifth one is what are the characteristics of the market that makes this attractive you can have an idea and it can align to your strategic things 
but if it does not attract the people whatever the end product or a solution or a service you know the definition of product solution or a service that we talked about in the previous session that you are going to provide if it is not attractive enough that means what the customer will not value and appreciate and will not purchase it or will not use it even if you are going to give it for free you might be giving it for free if there is no value people will not use it free means it's not granted like test over today's program is free as an example if it does not have a value you will not be in this session it has to have a value whatever that you are trying to build so you have to answer yourself these two questions what are the characteristics of the market that makes this attractive right why whatever that i am trying to do in the market that i am trying to do what characteristics in that market landscape is going to uh, perceive whatever that i am providing is attractive and value it appreciate it the individuals in that market and will they use it or if you are going to sell that product with money will they buy it you have to answer yourself that question and this is applicable when you wanted to start your own company but if it is not applicable uh, it is not applicable uh, if if you are going to give it give it away to for the for the free usage you should not be thinking like that it is applicable in both the cases in the second case will actually the individuals use my product that's the second uh, thing that you need to answer yourself if not purchase it then you have to also think about research about your competitors is there anyone else doing the same thing as what i am doing would i be reinventing the same wheel again and doing the same thing as others are already doing if that is the case obviously you know it is going to be an uphill don't don't mistake me that if you do something same as others are doing without any additional uh, value in it right you can still be successful don't get me wrong right you can do exactly what someone else is doing without any additional value ditto copy no additional value no differentiation still you can be successful because if the market is really big you can actually go and get some market share for yourself and some customer for yourself and you can become successful that could also be one of the strategy that you can go behind the other thing is you can take you can build something which is exactly same as that is already available out there but you make it more user friendly and you more you make it more reusable or you can take that is already there and you can rethink and do totally you know in a innovative way see like if you think about it before also there were a lot of car related uh, um, uh, companies were there you can call them and they can uh, give you send you the car and you can take the car and uh, and go and come back right in your trip uber is also doing the same thing right i mean they are also you know you are booking the car and they are sending it you are going and coming back then why a lot of people are going to uber not going to uh, the traditional car um, uh, um, you know uh, the rental companies because uber did things in a they did the same thing it's not the business case is not different but they did it they 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 did it in a way that it is very easy to use lot of additional features and things like that or you can do a complete new innovation right or that's called as an invention so it's very important that you understand the competitors that are out there and there are various ways right uh, that you can uh, decide to move forward do you wanted to do the same thing as what they have done or do you wanted to do a little bit different or do you wanted to do completely new thing it, 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 Oh, you know nothing is right or wrong you can choose anything any direction you are welcome to do that but make sure that that you have a people to use it right that's the most important thing then product positioning makes a difference you are, you know you have to always answer yourself is your product is unique right and in case of you know you deciding to build the same thing as someone else obviously you don't answer this question if you believe in that you can make money you can skip this question but if not you need to make sure your product is somehow unique if there is no uniqueness in your product if i am using a product that gives me everything what i need and you are also bringing a product to me and uh, you are also giving me the same thing 
then why would I even actually go to you? There is only one reason that I might go to you because you might provide that for $10 less, then I'm okay. I'm saving $10 and I can go to you. What indirectly it happens, it indirectly happens that you are going to lower your margins and you're going to go get less money. Right, so, so you have to make sure you, you know your product is unique. Then the ninth thing is, you know, ninth thing is you have to, once you reach all these eight points, ninth thing is you have to find out do you have enough resources to go to the next phase. Next phase doesn't mean you need to have 10, 20 resources to build the product, right? Do you have enough resources, three or four, to move from con concept phase to our next phase? And what are the skills are required that I need to develop for my next phase to complete my next phase? So once you have answer for everything, you can um, think of, um, you know, together collectively as a team, you can think go or no go. And you can go into the next phase. So I will stop here. It's already like nine minutes over time. Um, I, I, I apologize for that. Any questions? Uh, hopefully it gave you guys some thought process of what are all the questions that you need to ask yourself while you're teaming, forming the team and uh, while you are uh, coming up an idea together as a team. Um, you know, hopefully it's clear, right? These are all the questions you have to ask yourself and convince yourself one by one within your team before we move to the next step. And if you guys scrap no go, nothing wrong. Don't get the, uh, oh, then go back and come up, think of brainstorm for the new idea and then go through the steps. And, and then be as a team convinced, whether it is three people, two people, four people, five people, right? Be as a team convinced. Okay, this is the one that we are going to go do and let's decide all of us together go and let's go. All right, I'll stop here. I know that um, I couldn't, uh, normally I keep it more interactive. I did not uh, ask questions this time. Now what I'm going to do as a takeaway is in the next session, whatever that you have here, try to understand this and I will be asking few questions in a different words. I will give a spin to these 10 points and I will ask questions in different words for you to answer, right? That will give me a confidence that you understood these 10 points in our next session. That's the takeaway for today's session. I'll stop here. Any questions from anyone? If not, uh, we can close the session. Any questions, team? No? All right, I'll take that as no. I will let you all go and let's spend together uh, uh, next Friday uh, to, to ask ourselves question on these 10 points and become very clear on this concept phase, uh, what needs to be done in the concept phase. And we will do that uh, in practice. Uh, I, I assume that you would do that in practice with your team moving forward. Wonderful. You all have a wonderful evening and a solid uh, weekend. And I will uh, see you guys next week, Friday. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Bye. Good night, everyone. Hi. Good night, everyone. Thanks.